all and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video where we're gonna get just a little bit salty although still very opinion based I start my videos with saying that because your girl is the epitome of hyperbolic sass I like taking things that I think are stupid and talking about them in a comedic way if y'all don't like any kind of sort of like roasty roasty scenario that I don't think this is the kind of video for you but for all of you who do and love and have subscribed and stayed for my sassy realness today we're going to be talking about makeup that kind of sucks or sucked past tense depending on what product we're discussing now this isn't saying that if this is a product that you absolutely love that is fantastic Fantastic! You keep doing you, boo-boo. This is just me taking a look back, going down memory lane, and literally thinking about releases because there are a lot of them. And when you have such an oversaturated, excessive amount of products on the market, there are bound to be ones that just sort of fall flat. That in the great grand scheme of makeup consumerism, they're a fair bit of a dud, either quality, marketing, or just how they've aged since being released. If I've said it once, I will say it a million times. If there's something that companies like to do, it is releasing stupid shiz. They don't care anymore. They're just putting it out whether it's a good idea or not. And so today we're going to be talking about some of those in my opinion. And we're going to start off with one from a company that I own kind of mid-level from. But Lime Crime, when they released those little plushies palettes, they were these little cutesy four pan palettes of really soft diffused matte shades in really weird color stories i remember i found one of them at marshall's and i bought it because i was like oh it's long crime and it's at marshall's and i want to have everything and it had like an orange and a brown and a blue and I think a pink and they weren't even in correlating it was like a soft blueberry blue and then it was like a watermelon sorbet pink and neon orange it was it was just it was just weird okay and I don't recall any of these really having cohesive color stories it was this cute little like plushies matte whatever they did those diffused liquid lipsticks with it it was just kind of a weird strange not well thought out launch with a bunch of random diffuse because it was supposed to be a subtle wash of matte color and i was sitting here thinking i'm like do people really want a subtle wash of matte blue matte pink and matte orange and matte brown i can't vouch for a bunch of the other whatever what what's but i'm just like this this kind of wasn't thought out well in aesthetic wasn't thought out well in color theory it was just there most definitely at least in my opinion a case of well we've got these extra eyes shadows hanging out in the bag we don't have enough to create a cohesive full eyeshadow palette so that's just kind of roll the dice we'll see what kind of color combinations we get put them in four pan palettes and sell them as a cute little plushies teddy bear soft diffused experience I don't see these palettes in a lot of people's collections. I don't see people talking about these being the best eyeshadows they've ever used. I feel like this is a perfect example of just a blip on the scale of makeup releases. It's just there and then it's gone. Next, we've got to talk about one that takes me back. Back. I feel like this happened uh, pre Soraya realizing how much she really doesn't care so much for mainstream makeup brands. The disenchantment was starting to become a real thing. And I remember Too Faced, uh, which is always a, a, a repeat offender on these sorts of videos. But they released the mini chocolate chip and the mini, was it white chocolate chip? 
And these were just little, cute, adorable, teeny tiny, shrunken down versions, extensions of their chocolate bar palettes. And y'all, the quality on these things was so inconsistent. I remember this was back when Liv Loves Her Makeup was on the platform and she talked mad shiz about these things. She did not hold nothing back. And I think this was just pre-people starting to realize how inconsistent not only Too Faced, but mainstream high-end brands were becoming. And so these palettes came out, and I think they were priced at like maybe $29. They were a higher price point. They were adorable, so you had that going on there. The eyeshadow sizes were really teeny tiny, and then you brought in that inconsistent quality, and it was like some kind of crazy firefight revelation happening, where people were just like going around being like, oh, well, it's Too Faced. It's high end. It should be fine. But oh, it's expensive. But it's cute. But the quality is inconsistent. What do we do? I just remember it being this big thing. And maybe it's just me. Maybe my memory is whatever. I'm getting old. But for some reason, I recall this being some sort of up and up within the community because it let a lot of people down. And once again, that's not not a product I hear people talking about today. I don't see them having it in their collection being like, ah, yes, uh, the Too Faced Mini Chocolate Chip Palette is my end-all be-all eyeshadow palette that I will be buried with. I just don't see that happening. If it's one of y'alls that is fan tucking fastic, you keep doing you. But I do just recall sort of this hue and cry, this just whole scenario that came out between these two little mini palettes being these little piffs of inconsistency. Okay, this next one, I will admit. I purchased. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I'm willing to admit it. Back when KVD, Kendo Vegan Love Futuristic Fantasy Makeup, was still Kat Von D, she released this little gold pot of something. It's literally a shimmy shiny gold type of not cream, not liquid formula. I have it. It's in my like fancy editorial uh, special effects makeup drawer that never gets touched because I am still trying to figure out what to do with this shiz. It's too liquidy for it to be used as a consistent eyeliner. It's too thick and opaque for it to be any kind of like editorial highlighter. It's just this strange little chimera freak hybrid accident that somehow managed to happen at the lab that they decided, well, we've created this abomination. Let's put it in a little container. And this was during the time they were like, oh, special XZY12 thousand editorial bleh. They had a couple of those products that they were selling that came in those like Ziploc whatever bags. Not entirely sure what that was all about, but that product was in it. And like I said, I bought it and I was like, I'm going to be all kinds of editorial. I haven't done diddly with it. I've occasionally swatched it and been like, yeah, okay, that's pretty. I've got to do something with it, but I don't know what. Maybe if I did, I could do gold freckles with it in a super editorial look. I don't know, but I feel like it's just, it was just dumb. It was just this stupid little of a thing that was released. Let's put it in a plastic Ziploc fancy bag. Call it fancy limited edition. Uh, basically charge you for trying the product so that we can know whether we need to make more of this. All in all, it was just a very strange time to be alive. It is a weird product. I don't know what to do with it. And just based on the fact that it literally has a uh, little to no actual use, it just kind of sucks. Because I'm just like, what do I do? What do I do with you? It's literally some leftover goop they found. And they're like, all right, we're floundering enough as it is. Just throw it in a little container and sell it. Obviously, we've got to talk about some just straight up. I feel like this is a little bit less subjective. I felt that there was more of a overall general consensus when it came to this particular product, but 
Tart in all of their um Caucasian enlightenedness decided that they were going to bless the masses with a shape tape foundation. Fantastic idea yeah, in theory. We all love the shape tape. I'm using the shape tape today. But then when you take that idea and give it a color range that supports like five people and then on top of that you give it a formula that is equivalent to spackle the masses are gonna have some issues y'all i tried this shiz i shouldn't have gone there i shouldn't have put my money in that thing if for nothing else then i don't want to be promoting oh yeah y'all to have a shade range that is the farthest thing from inclusive. You know, don't tell them it's okay by giving them your money. And then you have the, uh, formula. Y'all, if you are cosplaying or for any kind of whatever, you need some kind of thing that is gonna crack and peel and make you look like an ancient decaying stone statue, then this is the perfect foundation for you. If you want something that's gonna be healthy, natural, look good, uh, not accentuate your issues, just, just, just don't even, just walk away, bypass the tart section, and go find you something else. Cause this shiz was basically foundation colored cement. Not only did it look bad, the limited shade range that they actually supplied oxidized like crazy. There was nothing well thought out about this product aside from the marketing venture to slap shape tape on it. That's as far as the creativity went. It wasn't formulated well. It wasn't thought out well. The fact that after they were called out, they were like, well, uh, we'll, 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 we'll release more shades later. We've got summer shades and, and, and winter shades. As someone who experiences the purchasing of a summer and a winter shade, I don't think there's that much breadth of depth. I need y'all to just get your shiz together and just acknowledge and admit that there are so many more skin tones that are into makeup than a whole level of pasty pastiness, okay? I need you to get over your Caucasian demographic and realize that there is a whole plethora of people who have varying levels of melanin, and they buy makeup too. That whole thing was just one giant train wreck from shade range to formulation, the absolute epitome of something that sucks. Okay, now we're gonna rag on Benefit for a little bit, because if there is a brand that likes to try to create solutions for problems that actually didn't exist, it's Benefit. Don't get me wrong, I have a couple of their highlighters gifted to me by one of y'all. They're bomb diggity shiznit. But I feel like a lot of their other products suffer from like, oh, we don't know what we're doing. And we'll start off with those, I don't even know what they're called anymore, but they were those eyeliners that you like clicked it up and out and it produced this product that you were supposed to then be able to like smear along your eyelid and it was was created in such this way that it was would make like the perfect shape i didn't buy these because benefit is not cruelty free i did a swap with one of my beauty gals and i was like okay all right i'll try these they were awful oh my goodness i tried so many times and you just you're clicking it up and you get the product you're like okay and then the product like flakes off it drags on your eyelid was not a smooth smoothie smooth experience and just the whole concept i feel like when it comes to certain bit concealer eyeliner you know lipstick if it's not broke don't fix it don't sell me some kind of fancy fancy gimmicky this is gonna make it easier when in reality it's just gonna complicate it to the point of you tearing your face off I do not recall enjoying any of that. And Benefit is just so good at coming up with these solutions that end up being so much more complicated 
than if you just used a regular liner or if you just use a regular lip liner and a lipstick. Because they also had that like two in one. It's a dual colored whatever. It's a lipstick and a lip liner. And you're like, that's great. You have it like this and then you've got to turn it upside down and do it like that. I mean, are we really, at this point, I mean, the beauty industry is like a what, how many billion dollar industry? We don't have enough money to research to the point to know that people don't want that kind of thing, that that sort of thing isn't actually gonna produce good results? Like, where are we putting this money? What are we doing with it? Because clearly we're not researching our demographics or our markets or figuring out what people actually want. And instead we're using it to create stupid push-up eyeliners that flake off our lids and then stupid multi-lip, like lip liner, lipstick duo things. It makes me feel like the beauty community research department is out here, sitting here, doing like Internet Explorer. I just, it's, it's just so gimmicky and so weird and lame and just, it just, I just don't understand the thought process behind putting our money to the point of where we create this shiz. All right, Urban Decay. This is once again very subjective, I understand. Once again, insert hyperbole, hyperbole here. But the Urban Decay Velvetizer, that like mix in mattifying powder situation that they did, it was this fancy little, ooh, take a lighter coverage foundation and make it higher coverage. Or ooh, take a dewy foundation and make it matte. I suppose it's something that's maybe good in theory, but I'm not sure just how, with a lot of these things, I'm not sure how well they were thought out because I don't know about uh, you, but for me and my skin tone, my skin type, and my skin tone, I buy foundations that work for me. I know what coverage I like, I know what finish I like, and very rarely, do I stray away from those? I'm not out here buying foundations and then buying this powder to make them a finish that I don't like on my face. I understand the concept was to give people variety. Oh, if you had a foundation that you wanted to add a little zhuzh to, then you had this cute little powder thing that you could kind of filter into your foundation and make it something else. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I don't understand the subtle nuances of needing a mix-in powder to turn a dewy foundation into a higher coverage matter foundation. But like, I'm feeling like if you're someone that likes a matte foundation, which is someone who would purchase this thing because it's made to make a higher coverage matte foundation, that person isn't gonna have a lot of like dewy foundations, isn't gonna have foundations that don't already suit their skin type. I just don't see people going out and purchasing foundations that don't work for them and then suddenly being like, thank God Urban Decay came out with this thing for me to be able to take these foundations that don't work for me and fix them. Maybe they think we're dumb. Maybe they think we're spending our money on stuff that doesn't work for us. I don't know. But I feel like when it comes to people purchasing complexion products, at least me, at least from my experience, we're not out here buying little velvetizers. We're just gonna go out, do the research, and buy a foundation that based on reviews and everything is gonna work for us. Rather than buying a little powder that I don't even wanna try to even start to guess what kind of consistency that shiz is gonna turn your foundation with mixing all up. I just, mm. Like I said, maybe I suck at makeup. Maybe I don't understand the subtle nuances of a mixing velvetizer powder. But I just think it was all kinds of complicatedness for nonsense and being like, oh, let's create this really fun and nifty, trendy, whatever it was made for black people to do Instagram videos and that's about it. Okay, we've got to talk about Too Faced again because I feel like these kind of videos are not accurately done unless I've got multiple Too Faced examples. I have talked about this particular product a couple times 
pretty sure it was in makeup we didn't ask for, but I'm going to talk about, once again, we're talking about a fundamental, an eyeliner. And they decided to come out with those little, like, peel glitter pop peel off eyeliners. If I've said it once, I'll say it again. When it comes to fundamental, just leave them alone. Unless you are actually improving the base of the fundamentals, then I don't want to, I don't want to hear about no glitter peel pull off whatever eyeliner i really really don't maybe it's just me i could be old and whatever but just the idea of like okay we've got an eyeliner i am wearing the physician's formula eye booster and the tart man eater on my wings today very straightforward it's a nice felt tip you go on you go in i put the shiz on i don't have to worry about peeling it off or it peeling itself off and it's just the whole concept of a peel off eyeliner i feel if you're creating something that is done so that it will naturally and easily remove itself isn't it gonna naturally and easily remove itself even when you don't want it to or is that just me all i recall about these is they came out and now all i know is you see them at marshall's and tj maxx and stuff because i don't think we out here buying a glitter peel off eyeliner i mean maybe if i was like 14 i would have gone into that shiz i am a 30 year old witchy aesthetic woman that if i want to go through that sort of situation to get like glitter eyeliner on my whatever it's not going to be a peel off one from Too Faced. i can guarantee you that like did any of y'all buy these did any of y'all like them did they work were they painful like when it comes to like my eye area as much as i may beat it with the color and all things like that i'm really kind of like okay i don't want to peel anything off. I don't want to pull or tug or do any sort of unwarranted aging on my eyelids. So when it comes to just, I feel like makeup that sucks or makeup that whatever, any sort of thing that's banked on the sole purpose of gimmick, rather than it being the quality of the product, the longevity, you know, it's going to become a staple for people, rather than it just being a brief Instagram moment of here's this totally random, absurd thing that we released that people are going to talk about because it's crazy, not because it's good, not because it's actually innovative to the point of helping anything. We're just talking about it because it's absolutely ridiculous. And companies have started to do this more and more and more. They just keep like, all right, if we release this totally random stupid thing, people are going to talk about us. Burp Squad. It may not be in a good way. It may not be positive. But at this point, brands really don't give a flip. Any press is good press. And it's just turning into this big, giant, mishmash, blenderful of just chaotic makeup releases that suck. I'm just not here for it for any part of it at all. But obviously, if any of y'all love this shiz, let me know and also link me or let me know something down below that you think that sucks. What's a release that was released that's just like that, 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 that has absolutely no purpose, no reason. It goes beyond makeup we didn't ask for. It's just makeup that sucks. Its sole existence is dumb. That is all the products I've got to talk about today. I could probably do this again. Let me know if you would like to see that. Like I said before, also let me know something that you think sucks. Sometimes it's good to just get this sort of thing off our chest and to just talk about it because these companies be out here wilding without ain't nobody making them take responsibility for the stupid shiz they're releasing and I am not happy having it. I will be their angry mo I will put them in the corner and say you need to think about what you've done because not everything you've done is good. I ain't supporting that shiz no more. We ain't having it. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and as always keep it real. Mwah!